Hey everybody, um, I've been running this foundation stocks with this KMW bottom metal from Terry Cross, awesome dude, um, for about 10 months or eight, eight months actually. And I've been very happy with it. It feeds very well on my Voodoo. I first found out about KMW bottom metals through a couple friends of mine who are some of the top shooters here in Texas. So they're running it so i figure i should run it too because they're running it um, and my the feeding um the feeding on my voodoo has been phenomenal So this video is for those of you who have uh, foundation stocks in your Voodoo or who are thinking about getting a foundation stock and wondering what bottom metal you should get. Um, hopefully I could help you fix or help help you with any fitting issue, feeding issues that you may have if you're having any. So I'm only speaking for people that want a foundation stock and um, so I can't speak for other chassis companies or um, stocks. Um, this is specifically for those of you that are thinking about getting your foundation stocks. Um, if you do need help with another chassis company like the Mate, or like the MPA Matrix, I do have a few friends of mine who may be able to help you out. But anyway, so um, this is a Voodoo bottom metal, and this is a KMW bottom metal. Of course, I would recommend if, if you're gonna buy a foundation stocks, um, it's recommended that you buy the Voodoo bottom metal because it's made specifically for the Voodoo. So I have one of these on my Graybo stock um, and it's it fits pretty well. But some of you awesome Americans out there, you love your third party customization stuff. So, um, and this was also recommended to me by a friend. So that's part of the reason why I got it. This is a KMW MK1 Gen 2 bottom metal. And one of the reasons why I chose it is because it's got very little tolerance. It's very minimal. And I just like this over the, the Voodoo because this thing right here it's the extended mag latch. I know Voodoo used to sell the shorter mag latch, but I think um, they started going with this extended ones and it just sticks out really far. And which is a personal thing for me. Um, I don't prefer that. I just prefer this minimalist um, mag catch. So, and it's just, you can see everything is well rounded and the machining on this is just phenomenal. Um, that's not to say the Voodoo is not, but I just like the looks of this one and the feel of it. So that's part of the reason why I chose it. And one of my good friends recommended it and he said that um, his Voodoo feeds really well with this. As many of you are probably aware, a control round feed on a, on a rimfire is very finicky and sensitive compared to a push round feed on a center fire. And there may be some minor modifications you'll have to make when mating your chassis and stock to your Voodoo. So this is the Gen 2 bottom metal and I'll tell you why I cut that. Um, if you look at the Gen 1 bottom metal, I'll show a picture of it. The Gen 1 bottom metal doesn't have this tab and uh, the tab was made, I mean, specifically for center fire. Pretend this is a center fire magazine. It's supposed to prevent the magazine from extending up to here. And it's supposed to prevent any feeding issues on a center fire, but we're running a rim, rim fire and um, we didn't really need that. Plus it was causing feeding issues and I'll show you why in a minute. If you look over here, I, I didn't realize it, but the, the tab used to extend up here and 
if you look right there, there used to be a tab that extended up higher on this bottom metal. And if you see these marks right here, those are from the tabs. That tab was causing, causing a 30,000th clearance and causing the voodoo to malfunction, so it wasn't catching the rounds. If I could show you an example. So this is uh, exaggerated just for, for the purpose of this video. So this tab right here that used to be right there was touching the action. And if you, because of that, it was causing a 30,000th clearance and it wasn't catching the round. And that was the issue that I was having. And this is exaggerated again for the purposes of this video. So when I took that off, that's when my feeding issues were uh, solved. But if you have a Gen 1 uh, KMW bottom metal, it doesn't have these tabs, so you don't have to worry about the tabs. Um, I basically just cut it off with a saw on mine. So that's just a minor modification that you'll have to make if you do buy the KMW bottom metal. If you don't want to have to worry about that, then just buy a Voodoo bottom metal and you should be fine. I think my only complaint about the Voodoo uh, magazines is it doesn't have an adjustable uh, latch, this tab right here. Whereas the Rim X, you can adjust it up and down and um, that will help you to tune your magazine depending on the stock or chassis that you're using. So if that's something that could change about Voodoo, that would be one thing. But I think that the Rimex has it patented already. So I'm not sure if Voodoo can add that. Um, but anyways, I just want to show you guys how very little tolerance this bottom metal. There's a little bit of play, but like it's very minimal. Look at that. Compared to probably other uh, bottom metals. And that's going to help me to load onto the mag. I used to run this Area 419 barricade stop right here, but I just, now I can just jam my mag onto the bag and not have to worry about any feeding issues. And I just like having the bag closer to here because this is where the, this is where the balance is gonna be closer to the magazine versus if I have this on, then the bag balance, the bag is gonna be in the front and it's gonna be less balanced versus over here is more balanced. Also, I just wanna brag about uh, Terry Cross, who is the owner of the KMW Bottom Metals. I spoke with him over the phone when I was having these issues and um, emailed him and he just took the time to help me out. Um, we had like a, I think 10 or 20 minute conversation on the phone. Just an awesome dude. He's been part of the long range community for many years. You know, he's one of the OGs. And um, so I just respect customer service like that. And that's part of the reason why I wanna support him. Before we begin, I just wanna show you guys that I have this level three plate carrier right there. So I'm pointing in the safe direction. I'm also wearing, uh, wearing goggles just in case um, it fires accidentally. But we're also gonna put this on safe just so that take extra precaution. Here's with the plastic mags and here is with the metal mags. So let's run this thing. So let's pretend I'm pushing forward, putting pressure that way. So this bag is pushing against the front of this magazine. Look at that, good feeding. Now let's put pressure from the bottom. And put some pressure in the back. All 10 rounds fed properly. Now let's try the metal magazines. 
All right, same drill. We're gonna put pressure loading onto that bag. No issues. Now I'm gonna push from the bottom. Push from the back. All 10 rounds, no issues. So some of the possible issues that could cause a feeding issue is when these rounds are not loaded properly. These should all, this, this are usually pointing up like that. And this, the rim on the top round should always be in front of the bottom round. If it's back like this and the behind, then it's gonna cause it, cause it to nose dive. Um, it's gonna cause it to point down more. This is exaggerated for the purpose of the video. It's gonna cause it to nose dive and cause a feeding issue. So one way to solve your feeding issue is just to make sure that your mags are properly loaded. They should be pointing up and the uh, round on top, sh the rim of the round on top should be in front of the one in the bottom. Also, another possible um, feeding issue that you may be having is because you're pushing the bolt too slowly. When there's 10 rounds and the magazine, the spring tension is at its highest. So I'm just gonna push this super slow and it should cause a feeding issue. If you look at that, that's a feeding issue. That could be a double feed if I pull it back and push it forward. That's because I push the bolt forward too slow and that spring tension right here is at its, mo is at its highest when you have 10 rounds loaded. So most of the feeding issues if you're pushing the bolt too slow usually happens in the first one, two or three rounds. So make sure that you're pushing the bolt fast enough so that uh, the control round uh, mechanism can catch the cartridge. So for those of you that are wondering if the Voodoo bottom metal feeds properly, I want to show you guys the same drill that I did with the Cam Delete bottom metal. Now this is the Voodoo bottom metal. So I'm loading onto that bag. Pretty good so far. Now I'm gonna push underneath here and put pressure from the bottom. Put pressure from the back. Voila. Now let's do the same thing with the metal magazine. A lot of people don't like the metal magazine because they have feeding issues with it. Um, for me, if you run the right bottom metal, with the right tolerances, you should be fine. So I'm loading onto that bag again. Same drill, push from the bottom. Put pressure in the back. Look at that. I hope you guys are enjoying these videos. My purpose on making this YouTube channel is for it to be informative and helpful for you guys. Um, I'm not making any money out of this again. Maybe in the future, that would be amazing if I get more subscribers. But if you guys keep watching the video and keep liking it, I'm gonna keep making content as long as I can. Um, so far you guys have enjoyed it. You know, of course I have a few haters, but um, let me know why you don't like the video. Uh, there's some of you guys that have disliked my video, which I don't mind. You're basically my research team. Um, so if you don't like something, you know, feel free to post it in the comments and I wanna work on making this channel a lot better. See you guys.